Hello everyone, welcome to another video and in this video, I will discuss reduction to standard form of a hyperbola. Our main goal in this video is to write equations of hyperbola from general form to standard form. Now let's start. Let's have the definition of hyperbola. A hyperbola is the set of points where the difference of whose distances from two fixed points is constant. Now, these two fixed points, we refer it as foci. Now, let's say we choose a point here and call it P sub 1. Now, the distance of point P sub 1 from the first focus, let's say that is D sub 1. And the distance of P sub 1 going to the second focus, let's say that is D sub 2. And now, we choose another point. Let's say this is P sub 2. Now, the distance of P sub 2 from the first focus, let's say that is D sub 3. And the distance of this second point from the second focus, let's say that is D sub 4. Now, let's try to write an equation that represents the difference in the distances of this point from the foci. So, for the first point, we can write it as d sub 2 minus d sub 1. And for the second point, p sub 2, we can write it as d sub 4 minus d sub 3. Now, by definition, it says that the difference for the first point and the difference for the second point are equal. Now, let's go to the standard form of the equation of a hyperbola. Now, there are two general forms of the standard equation of a hyperbola. First is for the horizontal hyperbola. So, for the first hyperbola or for the horizontal hyperbola, we have this standard form as x minus h quantity squared over a squared minus y minus k quantity squared over b squared is equal to 1. And for the vertical hyperbola, the standard form is y minus h quantity squared over a squared minus the quantity of x minus k quantity squared over b squared is equal to 1. Now, the general form of a hyperbola is commonly expressed as the expanded form of this square of a binomial and all the terms are generally written on the left-hand side of the equation. Now, what is the general form of a hyperbola? A hyperbola, in general form, is commonly written as ax squared plus cy squared plus dx plus ey plus f is equal to 0, wherein a and c have opposite signs and can be reduced to the form the quantity of x minus h quantity squared over a squared minus the quantity of y minus k quantity squared over b squared is equal to 1, which denotes a horizontal hyperbola. And for the other one, you have y minus h quantity squared over a squared minus the quantity of x minus k quantity squared over b squared is equal to 1. So generally, a general equation of a hyperbola can be written into either of these standard forms. So how do we reduce the general equation of a hyperbola into standard form? So, first of all is we have to group the terms containing x and y. <laughs> Next is we have to factor out the coefficients of x squared and y squared. It will be followed by completing the square in both x and y if there exists a grouping for each. However, exception arises if the right-hand side is sum of two squares which denotes a circle and the right member is zero or negative. Now, let us have one example. Now, for our first example, 
reduce to standard form the equation x squared minus 2y squared plus 4x plus 4y plus 4 is equal to 0. So the first step would always be to transpose the constant on the right-hand side, which is 4. So we transpose 4 on the right-hand side, our equation becomes x squared minus 2y squared plus 4x plus 4y is equal to negative 4. The next step is to group the terms containing x and y. So we have here x squared plus 4 plus the quantity of negative 2y squared plus 4y is equal to negative 4. Now the next step is to factor the leading coefficients of each group. Now, for the first group, if you can see, the coefficient of x squared is 1. So, if that's the case, we no longer have to factor anything from that group. Now, for the second group, we can observe that there is negative 2 as a coefficient of y squared. So, therefore, we are going to factor out negative 2 from that group. So, therefore, our equation becomes x squared plus 4y minus 2 times the quantity of y squared minus 2y is equal to negative 4. Now, the next step would be to complete the square for both x group and y group. So, here is our pattern. So, we always start with b over 2 quantity squared and identify the value of b in each group. So, for the first group, the value of b is 4. So, we substitute 4 for b, that becomes 4 over 2 quantity squared, and that becomes 4. Now, for the second group, the value of b is negative 2. So, we substitute negative 2 to b, so we have negative 2 over 2 quantity squared, and that is equivalent to 1. So, therefore, so to make each group a perfect square trinomial, for the x group, we have to add 4, and for the y group, we have to add 1. So, that becomes x squared plus 4x plus 4 minus 2 times the quantity of y squared minus 2y plus 1. Now, on the right-hand side, whatever has been added to the left has also to be added on the right-hand side. So, on the right-hand side, we can see that we have negative 4 plus 4, which was added to the x group, and you have minus 2 times 1, which is the value that has been added to the group of y. Now, to proceed, next is we have to factor out the perfect square trinomial on the left and combine the constants on the right. So, we have square root of x here is x square root of 4 is 2 so that is written as the quantity of x plus 2 quantity squared minus 2 times here you have square root of y is y square root of 1 is 1 the middle operation is subtraction so we have to copy that and on the right hand side this is cancelled because we are adding opposite numbers and we are left with negative 2 now, the next step is to divide every term by the constant on the right. And what we see here is negative 2. So, we divide everything by negative 2. And on the right side, this simplifies to positive 1. So, the last step would be to rewrite the equation to standard form. So, we have here positive quantity of y minus 1 quantity squared over 1 because negative 2 and the negative 2 on the denominator can be cancelled out. And you have here minus because this sign in the denominator can be written as a sign of the whole fraction. So you have minus the quantity of x plus 2 quantity squared over 2 is equal to 1. And that is the standard form of the general equation that we have for the first example. Now, let us have the second example. For the second example, we are asked to reduce to standard form the equation 3x squared minus 4y squared plus 6x plus 6y is equal to 0. 
So the first step would be to group the terms containing x and y. So we have the quantity of 3x squared plus 6x plus the quantity of negative 4y squared plus 6y is equal to 0. The next step is to factor out the leading coefficient from each group. So we are going to factor out 3 from our first group and negative 4 from our second group. So that becomes 3 times the quantity of x squared plus 2x minus 4 times y squared minus 3 over 2y is equal to 0. The next step would be to complete the square for both x and y. So for the first group, the value of our b is 2 and for our second group, the value would be negative 3 over 2. So we substitute that to b over 2 quantity squared. So for the first group, we'll have 2 over 2 quantity squared which can be simplified to 1. And for the second group, we'll have the quantity of 3 over 2 all over 2 quantity squared, which simplifies to 9 over 16. So therefore, we add these numbers to each group. So we have 3 times the quantity of x squared plus 2x plus 1 for the first group, minus 4 times the quantity of y squared minus 3 over 2y plus 9 over 6 for the second group. And whatever has been added to our left-hand side has also to be added on the right-hand side, multiplied by the number that we have factored out from the second step. So we have here is equal to 3 times 1 minus 4 times 9 over 16. And the next step is to simplify the equation by factoring out the perfect square trinomial on the left and combining the constants on the right. So we'll have 3 times the quantity of x plus 1 quantity squared minus 4 times the quantity of y minus 3 halves quantity squared is equal to 3 over 4. Next is we have to divide every term by the constant on the right. So we have this one. So on the right, this simplifies to 1. And we don't want any coefficient on the numerator. So we multiply this by 1 third. And also the denominator by 1 third. And for y, we multiply this by 1 fourth. And also the denominator by 1 fourth. So this can be cancelled out. And simplifying that, we'll have x plus 1 quantity squared over, this can be cancelled, so we are left with 1 fourth minus, you have the quantity of y minus 3 fourth quantity squared over, you have 3 over 16 is equal to 1. And that is the standard form of the general equation of the hyperbola. Now let's have the third example. So for item number 3, we are asked to reduce to standard form the equation 4y squared is equal to x squared minus 3x plus 4. So first step is to isolate the constant on the right-hand side. So therefore, the equation becomes 4y squared minus x squared plus 3x is equal to 4. Next step is to group the terms containing x and y. So we have here... 4y squared plus the quantity of negative x squared plus 3x is equal to 4. Now, next step is to factor out the leading coefficient from each group. So, we only have um, the group of x. So, we factor out the negative 1. So, our equation becomes 4y squared minus the quantity of x squared minus 3x is equal to 4. Next is we have to complete the square for both x and y. So we only have to complete the square for x. The value of our b here is negative 3. So we substitute negative 3 to b. So we'll have negative 3 over 2 quantity squared. And that simplifies to 9 over 4. So we'll have 4y squared minus the quantity of x squared minus 3x plus 9 over 4 is equal to 4 minus 9 over 4. Now, next step would be to factor out the perfect square trinomial. 
and combine the constants on the right. So, we'll have 4y squared minus the quantity of x minus 3 halves, quantity squared, is equal to 7 over 4. Now, to proceed, we have to divide every term by the constant on the right, which is 7 over 4. So, dividing everything by 7 over 4, this simplifies to 1. Now, to eliminate these 4, we have to multiply the numerator by 1 fourth and also the denominator. So, that simplifies to y squared over 7 over 16 minus the quantity of x minus 3 halves quantity squared over 7 over 4 is equal to 1. And that is the standard form of the hyperbola in example number 3. And that's the end for this video. I'll see you on the next one.